Our top story today, getting the community's reaction after someone mimicked the Gentry Middle School website. Thanks for joining us. I'm Emily Spain. We want to let you know we are having some technical difficulties with our video system, so our newscast this afternoon will look a little bit differently. We are working on it, and we appreciate your patience. Back to our top story. CPS is investigating after a racist image imitating the Gentry Middle School's website showed up on Google. Last night, that image went viral on Facebook. KOMU Mickey Neiman is live in Columbia with a response from the community. Mickey? Emily, I am outside of Gentry Middle School where school just got out just like any other normal day. But the last two days have been anything but normal for this school after a mimic of their website went viral. An image on Facebook sent users through the roof. A viewer sent us a screenshot where the words middle and students were replaced by the N-word on what appeared to be the Gentry Middle School page web page. A CPS official says this was an image on Google mimicking the school's website. It was not from the school's actual page. One local Facebook user and CPS system alum, Adonna Mason, says regardless, she is upset with how it has all been handled. Mason says it bothered her that things were just brushed off and went straight to social media before alerting the parents. Now, an official with CPS told me that parents have been sent letters alerting them about the incident and that the incident is being taken very seriously. Many comments online did call for punishments for those involved and said that this is not just a harmless joke. Google has since taken the image down, though. Reporting live in Columbia, Mickey Neiman, KOMU 8 News. And starting with our weather now, really clear skies tonight and for tomorrow morning will be in the upper 30s. Wind chill not going to be as big of an issue because we'll have calmer winds, but a warm up is coming. We'll track that hour by hour coming up in my first alert forecast in just a little bit. Okay, Matt, thank you very much. Three lawsuits, three former employees. They all worked for Cole County Emergency Medical Services, and they are claiming discrimination by their former boss. KMU8's Destiny Patterson is here in the studio to tell us about their complaints. That's right. I spent the day combing through these lawsuits. The former employees are claiming former Deputy Chief Jerry Johnson discriminated against them for their age. One former employee also mentioned examples of sexual harassment in her lawsuit. Court documents say Johnson fired each of them on the same day in April 2018. Their work experience ranged from 9 to 22 years. Julianne Jeminder re represents all three plaintiffs. She says her clients are still affected by their firing. The Cole, County, the Cole County Counselor says the county cannot comment on issues involving staff, but added the environment is completely different now. In the studio, Destiny Patterson, KOMU 8 News. All right, Destiny, thank you very much. Moving on this afternoon, Hy-Vee now faces a class action lawsuit related to a data breach announced earlier this year. The company first made the breach public two months ago. A Pennsylvania law firm is representing two clients currently, one from Columbia, but is fielding calls across the Midwest. The suit says the breach was initially detected in July. Hy-Vee notified the public about the breach mid-August without indicating affected locations. It also says the company didn't provide consumers this information until October 3rd. A partner from the law firm says the delayed timeline of events is largely why the suit was filed. KOB8 also reached out to hy V, who said they would not comment on pending litigation. John says the person we spoke to today, he expects to file more detailed complaint as more and more people reach out. A St. Thomas man is dead after a tractor crash late yesterday. The Highway Patrol's crash report says 83-year-old Robert Lubering was driving a 1967 John Deere. He was going down a driveway in the 1300 block of Lower Bottom Road in St. Thomas when he started to veer off the drive. The report says he overcorrected twice before hitting a tree and turning over. Emergency crews pronounced him dead at the scene. Here's what's happening right now. The FCC approved the merger between T-Mobile and Sprint today. The Ju Justice Department approved the merger in July, but it still faces a legal challenge from a team of state attorneys, attorney generals, seeking to block the deal. T-Mobile and Sprint say merging would help them compete with AT&T and Verizon on 5G technology. The state attorneys general say this will drive up prices for customers. 
The month-long strike by the United Auto Workers that has temporarily shut down dozens of GM manufacturing plants is one step closer to being over. Negotiators for General Motors and the UAW reached a tentative contract deal today. The agreement must now be approved by union reps and its members before it's finalized. Union members would still have to approve that deal, and they had asked for higher pay, better health care, and more profit sharing. Union members would still have to approve that deal, like I said, and ask for more benefits. Security video shows former Fort Worth police officer Aaron Dean being booked into jail. Dean's arrest came just hours after he resigned from the Fort Worth police force. He's charged with murder for the shooting death of 28-year-old Tatiana Jefferson. She was shot in her own home after a neighbor called police, saying the front door was open. Jail officials say Dean was released on a $200,000 bond. Fort Worth community leaders and black pastors are pushing for a federal consent decree to, quote, stop police killings of African Americans. If granted, the decree could compel the Fort Worth Police Department to change practices and bring about reform with the goal to end systemic abuse. Representatives from various ministers' associations were present today calling for justice. And the, the ministers also say their civil rights have been grossly violated. Coming up, a trooper steps in to save a man from a train after the break. We'll explain this super close call. And the latest on the New Orleans hotel collapse, new challenges rescue crews are facing. We only had a high of 51 degrees today, largely due to a lot of cloud cover that we saw. That's well below average. Our low this morning was 40 degrees. It's going to be a little bit cooler than that for tonight. I'm tracking it all in my first alert forecast a little bit. And how about a live look over Lake of the Ozarks? Your time is 5.06. This is KOMU 8 News, first at 5. Coverage you can count on. Welcome back. Chicago Public Schools canceled classes tomorrow ahead of an anticipated strike by the Chicago Teachers Union. The city's mayor and school officials met this morning to outline a contingency plan for students. The mayor says they have negotiated in, quote, good faith with the teachers union and they want to avoid a strike. Both sides are still at odds over issues like class sizes, staffing shortages and security of students in areas surrounding schools. The schools and teacher union officials have met more than 50 times in order to find a solution. A Utah police officer rescued a stranded motorist mere seconds before a train came down the tracks this morning. Utah Highway Patrol shared this video here. You can see the trooper pulling an unconscious man out of a car as a train quickly approaches. The driver had suffered a medical condition that caused him to veer onto the tracks and lose consciousness just after the trooper frees the man the train slams into the car. Well, luckily everyone was okay. Matt? And winds out of the northwest. That's a cool weather direction, but that's going to change through the day tomorrow, and it's going to allow temperatures to warm up. I'm tracking that coming up. Federal investigators are saying an aging failed elbow pipe caused a fire and explosion at a Philadelphia oil refinery last June. The report says the decades-old elbow pipe had degraded to just 7% of its original thickness. Officials say the pipe's thickness was not monitored. Thousands of pounds of deadly hydrofluoric acid escaped into the atmosphere following the massive blast. We have an update now to the collapsed hotel in New Orleans. The search for a missing construction worker at the site may soon turn into a recovery mission. Dogs will do one more sweep of the building today. If crews cannot find any evidence of life, the effort will switch to recovery tomorrow. So far, rescuers pulled one body from the wreckage and found another in the building. New Orleans mayor is trying to make sure the rescue efforts are done with care. He says they've actually built trust with the family and say they're doing everything they can to ret retrieve their bodies with digni dignity and respect. Investigators say the second body remains in an unstable part that crews cannot access safely. Missouri American Water customers in Jefferson City are under a precautionary boil water advisory. A contractor not with the company broke a 12-inch water main on Missouri Boulevard between Bolivar and Highway 50. This caused water system pressures to drop. No contamination has been found and the impacted area affects about 8,000 customers. 514 is your time. Let's take a look at our 24-hour temperature change. And currently, we're 16 degrees colder than we were at this time yesterday. That's because a cold front moved through the region and also because